Well, praise the Lord. I am Michael Jackson. Welcome once again to the Cutting It Right Bible Study. We're here once again with a Bible study for your heart and for your soul. We pray that all is well with you once again as we do open up the Word of God. We're glad you joined us because tonight we are going to be taking a few steps backward before we move a few steps forward. We've been talking about the cross. Amen. The Word of the Cross 101. Have we been looking at and, and opening up this statement made by Paul the Apostle in 1 Corinthians chapter number 2, verse number 2, which says that phrase is Christ and Him crucified. And we've been exploring the meaning and the grandeur and the scope of that statement and what it means to each and every one of us. Amen. So as I said, we're going to take a few steps backward. And that before we move forward tonight, uh, because we believe it's important that we uh, put a little stamp upon some of the things that we've said thus far, once again, before we move forward. Amen. And so we're glad that you have joined us here tonight. We pray that your time spent in God's word will be a fruitful one. Amen. Uh, Bible study without coming away with something uh, has not merited you or I anything. We want to make sure that we have received that we may apply his word to our hearts and lives. Amen. That is so very important. Amen. And so once again, we welcome you. We ask that if you're watching us over Facebook right now, whether you're watching live or watch, watch, watching on the replay, uh, we ask that you share out this page and others also may be blessed. Amen. And so with that said, we are going to pray and we're going to get right into this study for uh, tonight. Amen. We just, once again, we just bless the Lord. Amen. So Lord, we bless you and we honor you. And we thank you once again, Lord, you've given us this opportunity once again to come before you. And Lord, we thank you that you have given us your word, Lord Jesus. This word that is a lamp unto our feet and continues to be a light unto our path. Lord, we are so grateful that you have given us you through your word, Lord Jesus. Lord, for the next few minutes, Lord, we pray that you might be the silent listener to all that we do and say. Lord, we don't want to do any missteps. Lord, we don't want to do any violence to your word. Lord, we want you to have your way. Lord, speak to our hearts. Do what only you can do. Lord, bring encouragement, enlightenment, conviction. Lord, do as you please. Lord, we love you. We praise you. Draw those who need to hear these words at this point in time to this place on the World Wide Web. We love you and we thank you. And in your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. Well, hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is good. God is good. God is on the throne. Amen. Well, now our our scripture verse that we have been focusing on for the last, and this is lesson number six, by the way, in Word of the Cross 101. Uh, we've been focusing on uh, 1 Corinthians. We were in 1 Corinthians chapter number one, and we, we have discussed previously uh, verses 17 and verse number 18, uh, which says... For Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of none effect or made empty. Uh, and, and we've made the point, once again, we're, we're going backward before we move forward today. Uh, we've made the point uh, that we should never forget the connection that Paul makes here in verse number 17 uh, between the gospel and the cross of Jesus Christ. They are one and the same. Amen. That's important that we always understand that. We cannot separate the gospel from the cross. That would be foolish. The gospel and the cross of Christ, they are one uh, and the same. Amen. And in verse number 18, it says, For the cross, for the preaching of the cross, is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. And we and we brought out what that simply means. He's not talking about here in verse number 18. Uh, he is not talking about the act of preaching. No. Here he is talking about the content, the content of the message, the preaching or the word or the message of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. They, they cannot receive it because they don't know the Lord. They don't have the indwelling Holy Spirit. They're not able to receive it because of those reasons. And so it's important that we understand that the content of what we speak is so very important. Because it is only this content that Paul the Apostle is talking about that is going to have the effect that it needs to have. It is only the content of what Paul speaks of that is the power of God unto salvation. As it says in Romans chapter 1 and verse number 16. And what is that power? Once again, the gospel. And what's that from verse number 17? It is the cross of Jesus Christ. If the message that is preached is not Christ and him crucified, then folk won't get saved. And that's a bottom line. Folk will not get saved if they do not hear the gospel. No, they will not get saved if they do not hear the gospel. 
The gospel saves. Now, we understand about testimonies. When we talk about people giving their testimony, people have a powerful testimony uh, about where God brought them from to save them. That, that, that's all, once again, that's all speaking of what the cross can do. But your testimony and my testimony is not the word of God. Our testimony is not the power of God. It, maybe our testimony shows what the power of God can do. But in order for an individual to be saved, they need to be convicted by the Spirit of God. And an individual is convicted by the Spirit of God through the Word of God. It brings conviction. Amen? And so, to us which are saved, we know, we know this cross, we know this gospel is the power of God. Now, Paul goes on uh, in chapter number 1 uh, and verse... Uh, in verse number uh, 21, uh, he says, For after that, in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. We made it a point to say that, once again, this word preaching is not talking about the act of proclamation. It is talking about the content of the proclamation. And here, in verse number 21, he is basically saying, that it pleased God by the foolishness of the message. The foolishness of the message. Or that word. To save them that believe. Not foolish to us. Once again. We've been pegged. We know that it's the power of God. But this so-called foolishness. Is what the world says is foolish. This word. This message. This gospel. This cross is foolishness to the world. And But once again. It pleased God to use what the world sees as foolish. To bring salvation. And that's what Paul is saying here in verse uh, number 21. In verse number 22, he says, For the Jews require a sign, and the Greeks seek after wisdom. But we preach. And it's the first time that we see this statement together. We see this statement together, Christ crucified. But we preach Christ crucified. Okay? We preach Christ crucified under the Jews a stumbling block. And under the Greeks, foolishness. And those two, uh, uh, those two barriers still exist today. Those two barriers yet still exist today. And in many ways, those two barriers are, are yet responsible for people not coming to a place of faith, of believing. Because Christ is a stumbling block. It can't be that. It, 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 can't, be, it can't be that simple. Or it can't be that gruesome. Something that horrible could not be any good uh, to anyone. It can't be. And to the Greeks, foolishness. It just doesn't make sense. And we've, we've mentioned we, we've mentioned over and over again uh, the fact that, uh, that people don't look at what happened at the cross as something that can be life-saving, life-changing. It was a horrible event. How can that be of any good to anyone? And so to the Greeks, once again, talking about those who do not know the Lord, Jews, Gentiles, Greeks, whatever you want to call them, it's all foolishness. It doesn't make sense. But unto them which are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God, and the wisdom of God. That's what the gospel is. The, the, the gospel shows forth the power of God and it brings forth the wisdom of God. That God would use something so terrible, so horrible to the world, to those who don't know, and bring about life, and bring about deliverance, and bring about salvation through what the world says is ridiculously foolish. The wisdom of God. Amen? Now, from there... From there, we've gone on to uh, chapter uh, number two. And we read, starting in verse number one, Paul the Apostle speaking. And I, brethren, when I came to you, came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. And he's about to tell us what this testimony is. The testimony of God. When we got together last time, we talked about this testimony. What is the testimony of God? Well, the testimony of God is Christ and him crucified. In this context here that he's speaking of, 
the testimony of God is Christ and him crucified. How do we know this? How do we know this? Scripture, uh, uh, a scripture, especially especially when we read in the, uh, the book of Acts, we see that the apostles, all the apostles did throughout the book of Acts, throughout the book of Acts, all the apostles did was preach in the name of Jesus. This is all that they did. Preach in the name of Jesus everywhere that they went. And so that's how, that's how we know. And that's how we understand that the testimony of God is Christ and him crucified. Amen? Now, what about this phrase? What about this phrase, Christ and him crucified? Why would Paul make such a statement? In verse number two, let's read it. For I determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and him crucified. Now, I believe the first in our first lesson, in our first one or two lessons, uh, we made a point to make this statement uh, that when Paul makes when Paul makes such a statement that I that I determined not to know anything among you except or save Jesus Christ and him crucified. He was not saying and he, it, it should not be construed that he is eliminating every other facet of doctrine that exists. He is not throwing out every other doctrine that exists. I'm only going to preach about the cross. I'm only going to speak about Christ and him crucified. That is not what he is saying here. That is not what he is saying at all. Uh, because we know we have the doctrine of the church. We have the doctrine. Of course, we have the doctrine of salvation. We have the doctrine of angels. We have the doctrine. We, there, there, are, there are so many there are doctrines in the Bible. There have been volumes written on doctrine. And they are needful and they are necessary. Uh, and, and, and they are good. And when they are proper, when they are right, of course. And so we must make sure uh, that we understand uh, that Paul was not speaking out against other doctrines and placing the cross uh, in, in, in a, an exclusive place. Now, let me, let, me, let me sort of shape what I'm saying. We know that the cross is in an exclusive place, but every other doctrine stands upon the cross of Christ. Every other doctrine stands upon the cross of Christ. And so when Paul makes this statement, uh, he is simply stressing here the absolute centrality of the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's what he is doing. He is stressing the absolute, the absolute centrality of the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's what he is doing. Now, when Paul talks about Christ and him crucified, just to let you know, once again, he is speaking about the word. Let's read uh, Acts chapter 20. Acts chapter number 20. Uh, and verse number 27. Acts chapter number 20 and verse number 27. Here's what it says. For I have not, and this is Paul speaking, for I have not shunned to declare unto you all the counsel of God. I have not, he says, I have not shunned to declare unto you all the counsel of God. But didn't we say that, didn't Paul just say that he determined not to know anything among those that he preached. Here he's speaking to the Corinthian church, except Jesus Christ and him crucified. And here in chapter uh, Acts 20 and 27, he spe which, which occurs after this is written, uh, and he says, I have not shunned to declare unto you all the counsel of God. All the counsel of God. And that phrase, all counsel of God, uh, simply means the whole plan of God. The, the plan of God in a nutshell, the plan of God in a nutshell is Christ and him crucified. Once again, it's the central, it, it's what the Bible is all about. Jesus Christ is the central figure of scripture. Everything leads to, points to, is will, it, and is directed at him. He is scripture's centerpiece, the focus. And what Paul is stating here is that he did not shun to declare unto them this whole plan of God. The whole plan of God is Christ and him crucified. Jesus Christ, the central figure of history. 
That's the plan of God. Engineered in the mind of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. However you want to, however you want to say that. It is powerful. Once again, the wisdom of God. The wisdom of God. We also read in Acts chapter number 18. Acts chapter number 18. And what we read, what we read uh, in Acts chapter number 18, uh, chapter number 18, uh, verses 1 to 11, speaks of Paul's experience in Corinth. It's sort of a, sort of a, uh, sort of a backdrop. It's sort of a, uh, it, when we read Acts 18, verses 1 to 11, we see why he said what he said in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, of chapter 2, verses 1 and 2 and, and throughout. He was there. He was there. Because here's what we read. Uh, here's what we read. In verse, uh, let's look at verse number, I mean, uh, Acts chapter 18, uh, verse number, let's start at verse number 5. And when Silas and Timothy were come up from Macedonia, Paul was pressed in the spirit and testified to the Jews that Jesus was Christ. And when they opposed themselves, that means when they shut them down, they didn't take what Paul said, and blasphemed, he shook his raiment and said unto them, Your blood be upon your own heads. I am clean. From henceforth I will go unto the Gentiles. That's basically when Paul got fed up with the Jews and said, That's it. That's it. I'm going to the Gentiles from now on. And he, and he, and he departed thence and entered into a certain man's house named Justice, one that worshipped God, whose house joined hard to the synagogue. His house was right beside the synagogue. And Crispus, the chief ruler of the synagogue, believed on the Lord with all his house. And many of the Corinthians, he's in Corinth now, and many of the Corinthians hearing believed and were baptized. Then spake the Lord to Paul in the night by a vision. Be not afraid, but speak, and hold not thy peace. For I am with thee, and no man shall set on thee to hurt thee, for I have much people in this city. And he continued there a year and six months, teaching the word of God among them. Among who? He's talking about the Corinthians. Paul spent a year and a half in Corinth doing what? Teaching the word of God among them. Back to back to First Corinthians chapter number two. For I determined, speaking of his experience in Corinth, for I determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and him crucified. Is there a contradiction? He says, I'm only gonna preach, I only I, I made up my mind I'm gonna preach nothing but Jesus Christ and him crucified. And back in uh, verse number 11 of, of Acts 18, he says he preached for a year and a half the word of God to them. So, which is which? Did he preach the whole word? Or did he preach Christ and him crucified? Christ and him crucified is the whole word. Once again, it's not, it's not, it doesn't mean that you don't preach anything else. No, it doesn't mean you don't preach anything. Anything else about anything, anything, anything. Christ and him crucified is the foundation of it all. Christ and him crucified is the foundation of it all. You know, I was reading, I, I came across this online and I and and uh and I thought it was so powerful. We most of us have, have heard of uh Charles Spurgeon, CS C. S. Spurgeon. Powerful, powerful. Uh, preacher of the gospel from the 19th century and it, the, the, someone asked him someone once asked him why all of his sermons sounded alike why all your sermons sound like the same sort of kind of and he said that's simple he said I find my scripture and I make a beeline to the cross I find my scripture, wherever it is in the Bible, whatever scripture I find in the Bible, whatever the Lord, wherever the Lord is leading me to preach on, I find my scripture and I make a beeline, a straight line. I head straight to the cross because the whole Bible, the scripture, the word of God is about the cross. 
It's about the revelation of the cross. The revelation of the cross, it, it, it happens incrementally. It happens little by little, bit by bit, word by word, line by line, precept upon precept. It, it, it happens slowly, and, and it, it takes several uh, it, it takes several hundred years, over a thousand years actually, it, 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 many thousands of years. It takes for it to unfold until finally, finally, we see the Christ child in the manger. And so the word of God, the counsel of God, the plan of God, the word of God, it's the cross. It is Christ and him crucified. Paul understood that. We've, we've spoken. We've spoken already that the, uh, Paul understood. We said that Paul understood the glory of the cross. That's from Galatians chapter 6. Galatians chapter 6 and verse number 14 when Paul says that he would glory. He would not glory in anything except the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ. He understood its power. We said that Paul understood the victory of the cross. Colossians 2 and 15. He understood the value of the cross. He understood that the value of the cross was incalculable. He understood all of this. But also, what also, Paul, Paul the Apostle, he knew. Once again, the reason why he would say, I, I would, I, I've determined not to know anything among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. What would bring him to make such a statement? Because Paul knew that Christ was the present prescription. He knew that Jesus Christ was the present prescription. He knew that it was Jesus. He knew that the answer was Jesus. He, know, he knew that Jesus Christ alone was the answer to what ailed men. And what ailed men, what ails men and women is sin. Paul knew that Jesus Christ was the present prescription. We need to be assured and we need to know and we need to believe that Jesus Christ is the present prescription. That Jesus Christ is what folk need. That's what folk need. Folk don't need Alcoholics Anonymous and, and whatever Anonymous. They don't need another counseling session. They don't need to lay up on somebody's couch. And dredge up old memories and all kinds of things that they do. That's not what folk need. Folk need the present prescription. And that is Jesus Christ and him crucified. That's it. That's it. Jesus Christ is not one of the ways. Jesus Christ is not one of the answers. Jesus Christ is the answer. Jesus Christ is the present and only prescription for sin. That's it. Paul also understood not only that Jesus was the present prescription. He understood that the cross was the present power. He understood that the cross was the present power. The power of God. Once again, he spoke it in Romans chapter 1 and verse number 16. It is the power of God unto salvation to the Jew first and also to the Greek. But we who are saved, we know that it is the power of God. Paul knew that the cross was the present power. And because of that, because he knew that Jesus was the present prescription and the cross was the present power, Paul had a powerful present passion. He was passionate. That's why he said, I am determined not to know anything among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. That's what drove him to make such a statement. He understood the value, the power, the glory. The, he, he understood it all as best as he could understand. As much as the Holy Spirit would allow him to understand, he understood. Remember, God took Paul into the heavenlies. We read about it in 1 Corinthians. I believe it's 1 Corinthians chapter number 11. I don't want to get it wrong. 
but Paul was taken into the heavenlies. And Paul said that he was shown things that no man should see. And no doubt there was much revelation that was given to him. He speaks it. He was told things. He saw things. Things that he probably that he did not divulge. But I'm sure. He, he I'm sure that he didn't say everything that he saw. But he did speak some of the things that he was told. Some of the things, the, the revelation that was given to this man. He spoke it. And we, we read these revelations uh, throughout uh, his letters in the New Testament. Things that things that we don't hear Jesus saying. Now, am I putting Paul on a par with Jesus? Am I putting Paul on a par above Jesus? No, of course not. God forbid, as scripture says. No, no. But Paul was given, given insight and revelation that had not yet been given to any man. I'm not saying that he was a Solomon. He didn't have the wisdom of Solomon. The Bible says there was no man as wise as as wise as Solomon, in spite of the things that Saul uh, Solomon eventually wound, wound wound up doing. But for in the case of Paul the apostle, he was given revelation, and he was shown, and no doubt probably told things. The Spirit revealed things to him, and we are the recipients of what the Holy Spirit told this man. And this man went through it more than uh, more than most would think. He went through it. And so this man, Paul, because he was totally convinced, he totally, and if I could use, if I could use uh, the phraseology that we would use today, he totally, he had totally bought in to the truth. He was totally bought in to the gospel. And what it meant and what it was. He was totally bought in. You know, you know, I was a coach in baseball. I coached baseball for a little bit. Uh, played baseball, played basketball, played football. Did all those things in my younger years and many, many, many moons ago. And, and when you have a team, when you have a team that's all on the same page. And, and they all buy, they buy into the coach's plan. That team can go places. That team can do things. But as soon as soon as the team begins to uh, fall apart and, and doesn't put their their, their their confidence in what the coach says, then that team will fall apart. And in that way, in that way, Paul trusted everything that was told to him, of course, because he knew who was doing the speaking. And he trusted. And everything was just girded up. Because he put himself into it, he it didn't it didn't matter it did not matter to Paul what happened to him. He was totally he was totally taken in by the truth, by the power, by the necessity of the cross of Christ. He said, "Woe unto me if I don't preach this gospel." He understood that Christ and him crucified. Was he understood that Christ and him crucified was the very powerful present prescription? The cross was the present powerful power. He understood all of that, and that's why we read Jesus Christ and him crucified. Now he didn't use he didn't use. If we go to uh, verse number four, uh, First Corinthians chapter two, verse number. Let's start in three. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. Which is, once again, he's referring to he's referring to where he came from and what was happening there before he got to a current. Then verse number four, and my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power. He was not concerned in the slightest bit of trying to impress folk. He wasn't trying to he wasn't trying to put forth a uh, Put forth a, a, a good way. He wasn't. He, he wasn't. Uh, as we said last time, he wasn't trying to address, to impress. He just spoke it. He just spoke the truth plainly. He didn't have time to play games. He didn't have time to play games. He told the truth as it was. 
he understood the predicament of the human soul. And once we begin to understand the predicament of the human soul, we too will not joke around with it. And understand what I mean, joke around. We will understand that Christ and him crucified is so vital and so important because men and women, folk, people are dying without Jesus. They are dying without Jesus. And of course, you and I, we cannot reach everyone. We cannot hope to. We cannot, we cannot expect to. But the least that we can do, the least that we can do is to put the word where it can be heard. Allow the word to be lived out in our lives so that others can know who Jesus is. And everybody is not going to receive and everybody is not going to believe. There will be there will be pushback. There will be opposition. But we must not backtrack. And we must hold the line. And we must make sure that we don't dilute the message and that we don't compromise the message. Because when we do that, once again, as it says in 1 Corinthians uh chapter number 1, when we begin to try to address to impress, we will compromise the word. We will dilute the word. We will add to the word. And that will make the cross of Christ of none effect. It will be emptied of its substance. And that's not what we want to happen. We do not want the cross to be emptied of its substance. Amen? And so it's important... It's important that we understand uh, the, ap the absolute centrality of the cross of Jesus Christ. It is the essence of Christian ministry. Christ and him crucified. It stands alone. It stands alone. And once again, this, this is why Paul makes this statement. I determine not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and him crucified. It's the centerpiece. It's how people get saved. It's what it's all about. It's the heart of the gospel. When we talk about Jesus Christ, of course, we're talking about his person. When we talk about him crucified, it's talking about his work. His work, his cross work, what he did there, what he accomplished there. Jesus Christ and him crucified. The power of God. Amen. Let's pray. Lord, we bless you. We honor you and we thank you. Once again, you've given us your word. And Lord, we pray that we will take this word with us, Lord Jesus. Lord, we need to also determined that we will not know anything among them to which we minister except Jesus Christ and him crucified. Lord, we, we are not excluding, we're not excluding any other doctrine. We invite the other doctrines because they all stand upon this truth, Jesus Christ and him crucified. So Lord, we leave this at your feet. We ask that you give us the strength. And as we have spoken uh, this week, we ask that you give us the strength and you give us the boldness that we need to continue to carry out this word, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ and him crucified. Hallelujah. Lord, have your way in our hearts. Lord, touch those under the sound of your word, even right now. Lord, we pray that you will have your way in every heart and every life, Lord Jesus. We will give you all the praise and all the glory. And in your name we pray, Lord Jesus. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. 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 The sweetest, most powerful statement in the human language we mentioned last time is made up of 10 words. Christ died for our sins and rose from the dead. 10 powerful words summarized in five words. Jesus Christ and him crucified.
powerful, powerful. Amen. So we honor the Lord and we bless him. Amen. I want to thank you for joining us here in this study for this night. Amen. We pray that uh, the Lord may continue to be with you, lead you and guide you. Just want to invite you uh, to join us. We'll be back here. Uh, Lord willing, we'll be back here on Sunday, uh, Sunday afternoon with the Sunday sermon series uh, as we continue, uh, as we continue uh, in our series uh, on Sunday afternoon. So we pray uh, once again that you will be with us. That's at four o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That's four o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That's Sunday afternoon. Uh, Tuesday night, don't forget, we'll be here with our Hot Topic Tuesday. Once again, that'll be at 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And, of course, next week we'll be back here uh, once again, cross-talking. Amen. And don't forget, Monday night, 7 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time, the Line by Line podcast. Amen. So we honor the Lord and we bless Him and we thank Him once again for giving us this opportunity to open up His Word. Uh, we just bless the Lord, we honor Him, and we thank Him for what He is doing. Amen. I am Michael Jakes. Thank you for joining us. And God willing, we'll see you again the next time you're able to make it. For me, it'll be Sunday, Lord willing. For you, whenever you can make it, we'll be here. Amen. Have a good night, and God bless.